hi guys welcome back to my channel so as you can tell from the title of this video I will be showing you guys some souvenirs that I've gotten from around the world so to give you guys a little bit of a backstory ever since I was younger I would travel a lot with my parents at least once or twice a year we try to get away from like the stressful New York City life and just go somewhere different either to the Caribbean or somewhere in Europe so throughout my years of traveling with my folks I've picked up as you can tell a lot of souvenirs from different countries and you know there's something to be said when you go to a different country and you experience the culture and just from these souvenirs that I'll show you guys like just the culture and the heritage is so different from what you experience here in America and just in general I really encourage people to travel go see something else go see even something outside of your own state um, if you live in the United States right um, just go see something different go experience something different because you know, every country has something different for you to experience, something different for you to see, something, you know, you're going to find new things that you never knew before. Um, so I highly, highly recommend traveling because it will open you up to such a new world. I decided to sit down and do a video for you guys, just kind of showing you uh, the different items that I have picked up along the way. Um, so there has been times where I've been kind of generic, like I'll pick up jewelry, but I try to get jewelry that's unique to that country. Um... So I'm not going to start with the jewelry yet. I'm going to start with kind of like the bigger souvenir -y, um, more items, not really jewelry. Um, but I know, for example, like my grandmother would always, when she went away, she would only get jewelry. And don't get me wrong, jewelry is not bad. But I think there's just so many different colors and diversity in the other items that you can find from these countries. So that's what I try to do. Um, so yeah, let me stop mumbling and rambling on and let me get right into it. Um, so I guess we'll start with my most recent trip. I do have some souvenirs that I got maybe about 10 years back when I went to Europe all the way up into um, Bermuda. I went to Bermuda last year. So I have some items from that. So I guess I'll start with the most recent trip and kind of work my way down. Um, so in Bermuda, Bermuda is a very small island uh, by the Caribbean. Um, they're not so with smaller items especially in the caribbean there are a lot of people of their crafts depending where you go um there are a lot of handmade items but bermuda itself actually gets a lot of its items internationally for, for, i don't know why i don't want to say that they don't have people on the island that can make certain things because there are little shops where people have made their own items like from the actual you know from the island but I also when we went there they had told us that a lot of stuff gets made internationally and sent over so I try to kind of stay away from that I try to buy more items that are you know unique to that island and something that that you know a person that lives on that island has made because I think that just has so much more value and is so much more unique than you know if they outsourced it to somewhere else um, in different countries like Europe or something um, so one of the items that I got from Bermuda Bermuda is known for their pink that, sorry, they're pink sand beaches and what I actually will do is insert a couple pictures or maybe a little video to show you guys um, some footage that I got of the pink sand beaches there. And a touristy item that a lot of tourists get is actually the pink sand from the island so as you can tell there's a lot of clear beige sand but then there's also like these little specks of pink in it and as you can tell from the photos uh the sands basically look pink and hence why they are named pink sand beaches so this is one of the more uh you know touristy items that a lot of tourists get but again there's not a lot of places that have pink sand beaches so that's pretty unique to the island so i got one of those and then also what was really cool is that we went to one of the shops so we went on a cruise we didn't go and stay like at a resort or you know on the actual island we went on a cruise and we were docked on the cruise there for I think three days and right by the dockyards there's a lot of vendors and a lot of shops and sellers um, so this is actually another item that I got from one of the shops let's see if I'll focus so it's a hand painted tile um, 
it's kind of covered in the back so you can't tell but it's like a little kind of subway tile that you'll see and it's just this beautiful scene of just bermuda itself like a little strip of bermuda like the island so you have the water over here you have their like you know the flowers that are local to the island just the beautiful colors of the houses and everything um you know the caribbean is known for you know very pastel colors for the houses and that's one thing that i absolutely love because you're not going to find something like that in um you know in the states uh you can go to florida like florida does have a lot of pastel kind of colored houses but there's something about when you go to the caribbean and you see those houses are so unique um and just colors that i don't think you can find locally here in the states so it's just you know oh this is actually st george's harbor in bermuda that's where it is this is kind of like an um you know somewhat at a, at a lookout point there and then another item that i'm not quite sure if it's native um to bermuda i don't know if they have it in perfume shops but when i went to bermuda when i was younger with my parents on a cruise there was this amazing perfume um scent that i got that i absolutely loved but i cannot remember the name of it for the life of me and uh when we went to this port uh what is it the naval the Royal Naval Dockyard Port um, in Bermuda, they had this little kind of mall area shop and there were two or three perfume vendors that I saw and I had to go in there and try to find this perfume. Um, I don't think this is the same exact one that I got when I was younger, but this, oh, the scent of this reminds me so much of the one that I had when I was younger. So the brand is called... Uh, lily bermuda l-i-l-i -L -I bermuda and this one is their pink scent and it's just it's so nice um i don't have the box anymore i threw the box out and there is a little tag in the back but it doesn't really tell you like the scents or you know the flowers this perfume was made out of but it's a very kind of like spring summery kind of clean oh i don't even know like there is the lily there's hints of lily in there kind of hints of uh some type of citrus in there it's just it's such a great like um summer and spring scent that i really really love and i cherish this because um <laughs> you know when i went back when i was there years ago i got a bottle completely forgot to take down the name or get a picture of it so i wasn't able to find it again um but i didn't cherish it as much i kind of used it a lot and then didn't get it replaced and i really i'm kind of sad about that because i really did love that scent so i think this one as well i'm just you know i will use for special occasions but it's not going to be like an everyday perfume just because it's not something that i can get every day i haven't tried looking online um maybe you can get it online but if you guys are going to bermuda check that out the lily, uh, lily bermuda line in pink oh it's to die for it smells so good and i absolutely love it and highly recommend it if you guys ever go and like perfumes i definitely that i actually got from bermuda and i'm gonna try to get pretty close because i want you guys to see the detailing in this oh you might not be able to okay maybe i don't know how well this is showing up on camera but it's this beautiful stone I forgot what they call it. I'll insert it. I have to find a little pamphlet for it. But it's this beautiful stone that has... Um, so it's in the shape of a heart and it has four different colors. So it's like a diamond that has four different colors. Um, let me see. It has pink, purple, green, and this kind of like peachy orange color in it. So I thought this was so amazing. I have to find the stone name for you guys. Uh, but this is also local to Bermuda. Uh, she does have a shop that she runs online, but it's very limited to the amount of items that you will find compared to if you go to the actual store in Bermuda and buy them. Um, very reasonable, very affordable prices. I think this was less than $100. And for this item, I think it was totally worth it because this is so beautiful and unique to see a stone that has four different um colors in it just absolutely amazing i mean this this piece oh so gorgeous and honestly this is not doing it any justice and there's too much light in the room probably so you can't really see it too clear but it's absolutely beautiful and unique and what i actually will do is insert like some pictures of some other items like some earrings or anything that she has in this stone just so you can really see um more of a definition of it than you can see in this because i think it's too light for you can to see it all but it's so pretty it's so unique um again something native to bermuda so you won't find it 
anywhere but there or on the website but the website is limited so if you do go to bermuda um stop by this jewelry shop i will also list that to, um so you guys have the reference stop by this jewelry shop and look at this stone in person because it's absolutely gorgeous i do have one more item from bermuda so in that same royal dockyard there was this little vendor that had these gorgeous handmade plates um so i had gotten three of them because they kind of had a sale um let me show you guys these plates they had a sale on them um they had big like bigger plates that you can actually put out for dinners or you know bigger plates that you can just display but i just found these like little bowls so much cuter to, just to get a couple you know you can put your rings in here can put some loose change in it so i just want to show you guys kind of one by one what they look like so this is the first bowl it's pretty small it's not you know it's not large it's not too grand it's a pretty small bowl can hold some rings some you know earring studs um some change but just the detail was so beautiful in these bowls that i just i had to get them here's the second one this has like a little turtle detail and it's in purple purple is like one of my top fave favorite colors in the world so that's why i got this i love purple and then there was this beautiful kind of pastel and dark blue one and i love blues blues and purples i i'm just really attracted to actually as you'll see from the souvenirs that i pull i do have a lot of purples and blues because that's just the colors i'm really attracted to um yeah so this vendor had these cute little bowls i think it was like three for fifteen dollars so it was only like five bucks a piece these are all also handmade so these carvings so it's not it's not a painting in there these are actually hand carved and then they um they do go in and then they paint over the the carving you can tell more details in here like they actually there it's bumped out this is bumped out and they actually painted those beautiful greens and reds in there so i just thought oh my god the amount you know for five dollars for a bowl like this and for the handiwork that goes into it it was a complete steal I'm, I'm absolutely obsessed. I actually ended up getting these as gifts for some of my friends as well. And they really loved and enjoyed it. So I thought that was really unique. And that's actually the last item that I got from Bermuda. And the trip before that, I had gone to Costa Rica twice. Um, a lot of people, believe it or not, for some reason, don't really venture to Costa Rica. They just don't think it's kind of a great getaway place. Just because it's... Um, there's a lot of volcanoes in Costa Rica, so the water there isn't like crystal clear blue water that you would get on some of the Caribbean islands. It is crystal clear, but it's a little bit darker just because from volcanic ash and everything for so many years, um, the base of the water at these beaches and at the resorts is kind of dark. So it's a, like a darker blue kind of, yeah, like a darker blue almost you know like a darker very deep blue color um so not a lot of people are attracted to that a lot of people want the crystal clear water and again the water is crystal clear it's just different colors because the sand and the base below the water is darker than like you know white sand or beige sand so hence why the water is a little bit darker um but i absolutely loved it uh, my mom actually heard from a friend about a resort in costa rica that she went to and she really loved and enjoyed and you know my mom was like oh let's go let's try it. i was like costa rica really you know i kind of have my doubts also but it was so amazing i absolutely loved it i'll also insert some pictures or video to show you guys the resort that we were in um and the items that i got from costa rica i actually did end up getting at the resort um you know at resorts items are a lot more expensive you know if you go to the local markets or somewhere you know kind of out of the way from resorts kind of local in town you'll find these items probably for a lot cheaper um but the exchange rate in costa rica is also pretty big i think our dollar is like a hundred and something of their money so <clears throat> you know you see an item that's like 500 of their money and for us that's only like you know a couple bucks whatever the case is um so totally worth it i think i got these items at a great steal um i really can't complain i really enjoy them so let me start with the first item so this item i had picked up the first year that i had gone to costa rica so it's this beautiful hand painted bird um also as you can tell from this collection well you will tell i do have a lot of birds i love birds uh we actually do have a bird at home also there's just something about birds that are so majestic and that I absolutely love. So I was just gravitated to this and the colors in this. Let me just do it up close for you guys. The colors in this. Gorgeous. So it's like this beautiful rainforest view 
with you know their local flowers right here um and then just this beautiful parakeet that i i oh I just fell in love. I saw this and it was so gorgeous. And I think this was only like 20 or 30 bucks, but absolutely worth it. It's on this piece of wood. You can tell that the wood is back here. It has a little clip. So I have it hanging in my room and it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. It's handmade, hand painted. Just the colors in these just spoke to me and I had to get it. So that I got my first year there. And they have this person who makes these. Um, there's a couple people that are making these. Um, but there's a ton so my second year that I went I picked up this bad boy uh, If you guys can see let me try to show you guys So this bad boy so this is another parakeet that they have up here another colored one So the one that I showed you was um yellow and blue this one has some reds some blues and some yellows Toucans because Costa Rica is known for their toucans and then this is actually a wildflower from Costa Rica that is grown there So that's another thing it just has like, you know, their native bird um, Their native flower, which I thought was really special and unique um, It's just absolutely gorgeous again. It's on a piece of uh, wood as well And this one actually still has the price on it. So this was only $36 Which for the actual size of this thing. I mean look at this just to show you guys ooh, a bit of a comparison, this is pretty much the length of my hair. <laughs> and my hair is pretty long. So this is, you know, $36 for a beautiful hand painted piece like this. And compared to this one um, that has kind of like the whole thing colored in this beautiful paint, this actually kept the integrity of the wood. So the artist painted, you know, the flower, the trees, the birds, but he also kept these specks of the wood that you can see, which I really enjoyed and loved. Um, so that's another item I got actually when I found that first um, Wood uh, painting of the bird there was a beautiful red bird right next to it Which was kind of like the same as the first one I got it was fully painted You couldn't see any of the wood in the back. It was just fully painted, but it was a red um, Parakeet instead of a yellow one are these parakeets? I don't think these are parakeets. I don't know what these birds are called. <laughs> I should look that up, but um, yes so it had a red one like this with fully painted and I wanted to go back the next year I went back I wanted to get that one but when I went back they didn't have it anymore But that was okay because again they had like a ton of these um, You know some of them had Sunsets some of them had waterfalls which again I love too But I really gravitate towards birds and I actually saw my first toucan when I was in Costa Rica the first year And it was absolutely amazing it blew my mind seeing a toucan in person Oh, so gorgeous. I'll also insert some photos that I've got of that toucan up here as well. But it was such an experience <clears throat> that I had to get something that had toucans in it. So those were the two uh, wood paintings that I got the two years we went. I also ended up getting this little cart statue as well. And this is as well of, this is also of a toucan as well. So this is mahogany wood. And I think this is... I don't know to be honest with you I know this one's mahogany wood and then this is just you know a regular wood that they added uh, for the beak um, I would have liked if they you know maybe put some color in the wood just so it really represented a toucan because you know a toucan is very vibrant and its beak has so many colors but overall still again I absolutely loved it um, the craft craftsmanship on these items absolutely amazing again made by a local craftsman in Costa Rica um, so I really love that really enjoyed that so I got that and as you can tell here we go here's <laughs> Another bird because I can't you know, I can't I just I love these birds. So this is actually made all out of stone Look at this guys the detail on this hold on. Let me turn this guy around Absolutely gorgeous. Look at the stonework the branch that he's sitting on Absolutely gorgeous and then he was painted a couple colors you know to match you know just to look pretty and to match kind of like the birds that they have in costa rica but i absolutely love it um i think i had picked this up last minute at the airport there uh because they also have like little gift shops at the airport and i don't know something just i saw this and it really caught my eye and i had to have it so again another bird <laughs> um and yes here we go again another bird but let me explain this to you um so if you've ever been away at a resort you know that usually when you're laying out on the beach there's vendors that come out and try to sell you things so either they might try to sell you um you know some handcrafted items some jewelry whatever the case was 
Uh, so there was a few vendors that were walking around with these birds. And what's very unique with these birds is first of all, they're very colorful, very beautiful, and I absolutely love. But it's also a whistle, and let me show you guys. I think that's how you play it. So what's really cool about this is it's like it's it's a whistle and it's like a I don't know if it's necessarily a bird noise but it's kind of like a rain it gave me, it gave me like rainforesty noise vibes um, and I really enjoyed it and I thought that was absolutely cute and adorable and so unique because believe it or not um, when I've gone to resorts I haven't seen something like that like I've seen people sell like little you know knickknacks like carvings and stuff and necklaces but actually a bird that like played this beautiful music that was the first time I've ever seen that um, so I thought that was really unique I think I got this for like five bucks totally worth it again hand painted handmade makes these beautiful noises so i really loved and enjoyed that so i had to get that um and let's see let's stick with the caribbean so one item that i got <clears throat> this i got way back when this was more than 10 years ago i had gotten this item in i don't want to get this wrong i think i got this item when i was in dominican republic so what it is, it's a candle holder. And look how gorgeous this is painted. Look at the detail work on this. So you would put your candle on here, you know, right here on the middle, on the base. And then this is like, you know, this covers it. And then at nighttime, you have a candle in here and, you know, it just illuminates all these little openings. So let me show you guys a little bit of an up close. So these are all the openings and just the colors on these. Like this is what I absolutely love. So every side is something different, you know, a moon, some stars. Um, I just, I thought this was absolutely beautiful. This is what the top looks like. Um, so I saw this and I had to have it. Again, this was handmade locally by someone in DR that makes these. And I just thought this was so unique, the colors. And again, like I told you, I'm very attracted to blue. So I saw this beautiful deep blue color and I was like, oh my God, I have to have this. Um, it was just so unique. I mean, it's just, it's so amazing when you go to other countries and you see the craftsmanship and the different, you know, artwork that they basically make because it's so different is, so, and that's something that I really enjoy because you come to the United States and not to say that the United States doesn't have great souvenirs that you can pick up some really cool items, but it's usually like, you know, I love New York or I love Chicago or wherever you go, you know, it's like the I love that state or, you know. I don't know there's just like maybe some there might be like certain cars that are unique to the place certain food items that are unique to the place but there's just something when you go away to different countries that they're the craftsmanship is just so different and they make things so i don't know and this probably sounds bad but and don't take offense but i just think they're so much more artistic with what they make and what they create um they're definitely they pay homage to like their roots and their culture and their heritage and i think it's just so amazing when you go to these countries and you learn all these different things about these countries and through their artwork and through what they make um because it definitely is something special and something unique to see um so yeah so this one i got in dr absolutely fell in love with thought it was so unique and it was a candle holder i love candles as well um so yeah, so I just thought that was really cool. So I ended up getting that. All right, so let me get into some jewelry pieces because there were some jewelry pieces that I also did get from Costa Rica and Bermuda. Um, so let me get into those and then we'll hop into the pieces that are for um, from Europe and other places that I've been. So these bad boys I got in Costa Rica my first year I was there. Let me see if I can show you guys. This is how they look up close. Let's see, will it focus maybe? These beautiful earrings, this is made of a native stone uh, from there. Um, and again, they're, da uh, they're dangling earrings. I really like, like smaller dangling earrings. I don't like anything too heavy. Um, so I really love those, so I got those. Uh, these beautiful ones also, these are of a stone. I think it's probably a stone that's pretty international. I don't think it's anything that's you know to the costa rican um you know i don't think it's anything from their country but another just cute little pair of dangling earrings Actually, when i was in mexico when i was a lot younger uh we went to some of the aztec pyramids that they had in mexico and what was really cool is that they had this jewelry shop by it that had really expensive jewelry obviously but then there was also kind of um 
this monogram slash name chain you can get um so you know new york at least when i but when i was in high school the big thing was name chains and earrings like everyone had your you know name chains earrings uh rings and that was a huge thing i actually still do have mine um so they had something like that in mexico but what was really cool is that they had it in aztec writing so you can get your name in aztec writing which again hello how unique is that like that is so awesome that you can get something like that made um i mean i know you can go to different countries and they probably have the same thing where you can get your name and like you know their lettering whatever the case is but i just thought this was so cool so let me show you guys so the way my name is spelled so my, my name is anna um and the way i spell it is with two n's so it's a n n a um so this is the beautiful I want to really get this up close for you guys so you can really like look at that detail isn't that amazing so it's a n n a and it's just in their aztec lettering or i i'm not sure if this is actually um aztec lettering if this is just another tribe's lettering um because again i went like over 10 years ago so i can't you know really off the top of my head remember but it was just it was so unique and the fact that you can get your name done like this and you know they have this gorgeous border around it it came with this chain so it's just it was so unique it was not super expensive it wasn't anything crazy so i just thought that was so cool to get like a name chain in a different language in a different culture that you know nowadays you know they still try to keep the culture alive but it was you know hashtag native people way back then that you don't really see them using this type of language or um, lettering anymore. So it was really cool to get something like this made. I thought that was so unique. Another jewelry piece. This I actually got when I was in Israel. These are beautiful little opal kind of drop down earrings. Um, opal is not native to Israel. You can find opal in a few different countries. Uh, but there was just something really nice about them. I saw them and kind of had to have them. Uh, so yeah, so I got those when I was in Israel and my last item from costa rica also is actually another so i showed you guys the bird that was made out of that mahogany wood from costa rica and then i also ended up getting this bowl this is also something they sold right on the beach um i think it was like 20 bucks for this beautiful bowl it's huge you know it's a really really big bowl again with this beautiful mahogany color and this beautiful lighter wood kind of surrounding it i just thought it was so unique and so beautiful oh guys look at this so gorgeous honestly the video doesn't even do it justice because in person it's so beautiful it's like a beautiful deep bowl that you can use either i personally am never gonna put food in it because it's just so unique that it's something i don't want to damage or get scratched up but you could definitely use it as like a centerpiece for the table. Maybe put some flowers in there. Um, you know, just some decorative pieces just to make it nice. Or, you know, keep it right in the front of your house. Kind of when people come in. Like if you have a little table there, you can like maybe throw your keys and stuff in there. But again, I really don't want to scratch this up. Or, um, you know, I just think this is so beautiful. Um, you can find wood pieces in, the in you know, in the United States. That's not something, again, that's... Um, only from costa rica you can definitely find these type of items here but i just thought you know the beautiful color and the mahogany and just again the the hand craftsmanship of someone again this is made by a local artisan there in costa rica i thought that's really cool you know i just really enjoy handmade items i'm really big on handmade items and things are unique and things that i haven't seen um you know in a lot of places so i thought that was really unique so that's another item i picked up so now let's get into some items that i have gotten overseas on the east side so some items that i've gotten from you know places in europe um and not in the caribbean <clears throat> so let me start with so since i did show you guys those earrings from israel let's just keep going on that so when i went to israel there were a lot of um kind of there were clothing items that i picked up they were this um these hands um in jewish culture they're known for these like hands of protection that you put all around your house i have one by the front door i have one in my bedroom and they're just kind of you know to ward off evil and kind of negative energy and people and just kind of like you know keeping a watchful eye on you um so i have a few of those around the house um that are hanging up and i don't want to bother taking those down uh because actually it's a bad omen you really shouldn't be like you know moving them around and Break, taking them on and off they should really be kept in their place so i'm not going to show you guys those um 
But one smaller item that I got was this little genie, uh, what is it called? Lamp? There we go. Genie lamp. That's what, that's what it is. I couldn't think of it. This little genie lamp that I got. I thought it was so unique. It was so cute. Um, it has this beautiful gold and red and green detail and then the top does come off. But it's so tiny you really can't put much in there. But I just thought that was so unique and cute. Um, so I got that. Um, I don't think it's really more towards the Jewish culture. But I just thought it was something unique. Something I haven't seen before. So I really liked it. Um, and oh my god I just there's so much more that I wish I could have bought there but it was really expensive and I went when I was in college so I didn't have that much money to spend on items you know like when I went away with my parents I'd be like hey mom and dad can you lend me a couple bucks so I can buy this item but I went when I went to Israel um, I went with a group of people and I was in college and I didn't have a lot of money so you know money was tight so I couldn't get you know a lot of things but I did get a little things here and there which I really appreciate and love um, so these were one of the items that I got um what else the earrings i showed you guys i told you guys about the things that i have hanging up so that's all i have from israel um then a couple years i want to say when i was either 15 or 16 so this was over 10 years ago um i did a trip in europe with my family so we hit like we hit london we hit italy we, we hit paris um where else do we go london italy paris Right, and then the only other place I've been to in Europe is, uh, I don't want to get, Bulgaria, Bulgaria, um, and that I actually went through a high school trip, we went to Bulgaria, anyways, that's a whole big story, but anyways, we went to Bulgaria, I don't really have much from Bulgaria that I picked up, but that was a high school trip, and then the only other parts that I've been to are Italy, Paris, and, um, and London, sorry, England, <laughs> Um, so this is an item, kind of a touristy item that everyone picks up. So I got the Eiffel Tower. Uh, this is not just, you know, an Eiffel Tower that I bought here at like Barnes and Nobles or online or at like Home Goods. This is an actual Eiffel Tower that I bought. Oh, where's the in Paris? There we go. I had to think about that for a second. Um, so this is an actual tower that I bought there in Paris. Um, so it has kind of like a little thing on it that says Tour Eiffel. And then right here, I don't know if it's going to focus, but it actually, right here, it says Paris on it. Um, so yeah, so it's just really nice. Uh, it has, it, it's kind, it kind of looks gold and like this darker gold color, but it, it's always looked like this. It didn't like rust over the years or anything like that. It's always looked like this. Um, again, pretty touristy souvenir, but I thought, hey, I mean, you're only there once, right? Might as well. Especially when I was younger, I was super touristy and just got like a lot of the touristy souvenirs. Um, as you can tell, like when I went to the Caribbean and now that I'm older, I branched out and got more unique items and more um, items that you can probably only find in that country. But when I was younger, I was very touristy, so I got like the typical touristy items. Another typical <laughs> touristy item is uh, when I actually got this statue when I was in Florence, I believe. Um, yeah, because that's where they had the statues. Uh, so this item I got when I was in Florence. And this is just... Oh, let's see if this will focus. Oh, it's so bright. Will you focus? Maybe. Let's see maybe there you go you guys get a little bit of detailing so this is a small replica of the david uh by michelangelo um i really love history history is a subject that i always enjoyed in school sorry i couldn't think of the word <laughs> um so when i actually went to these places and saw these items they were absolutely breathtaking and just you know kind of like a one time like once in a lifetime thing uh so again i was very touristy and picked up some items that are very not unique but just you know something very what's the word something very you know the type of items that everyone gets when they go traveling um so again so i got this david absolutely love it the detailing on it is like the exact one that's actually standing up in italy so that was really cool so i got that and then when i went to london i got a little piggy bank um so this was like their telephone boots in london this is how they look like and if you see items in here that is because it is kind of like this coin dispensary um let me know if you guys are interested so what's in here is a lot of coins from different countries um so some of these coins are 15 years old some of these coins i got on my most recent trip so two three years old um but there's just coins that i've collected from my travels 
so i have some coins from europe i have some coins from bulgaria i have coins from israel i have coins from a lot of the caribbean um countries that i went to so if you guys are interested i can do a whole another video and show you guys the different coins that i've gotten from these countries i don't know if they're worth anything to be honest i probably wouldn't sell any of this stuff i really just keep it from memory every once in a while um i look over and see this and then i just you know i open it and put all the coins out and just look at them just to you know just a little as like a little throwback and just to remind myself of the places i've been um so yeah so let me know if you guys are interested because i can definitely do a coin a world coin collection from my travels or whatever the case is so that's another item i got that i really really loved um also because i went to a lot of these places with my parents we have a whole collection um on the hallway wall of like these plates because my mom's really into plates so it, it's kind of a generic thing a lot of places you go to will have plates that have you know uh the attractions of those countries the local bird the local flower you know things like that painted on them um so we have a whole collection of plates that we have and that even dates back to my grandmother because my grandmother had a whole wall in her apartment of all the plates that she's collected over the years from the different countries so i was a sucker and i actually got a plate um this is a plate that i got when i was in venice let's see if this will focus and it basically has their attractions um uh this is the square that i think it's saint mark's or saint marco not saint mark's <laughs> saint marco square um i'm not sure i have to look these things up because again it's been so long uh gondola i did go on a gondola ride when i had gone uh to italy so yeah i just i have to really look this stuff up and remember but these are a lot of like the famous landmarks and oh my god in venice there we go venice i was gonna say florence for a second venice that's what it is in venice so these are some of the um gorgeous landmarks that they have in venice that you would probably run into when you're in that country so this is just like a little plate i got um it does have in the back here a little clip so i can hang it up but i don't hang it up i just kind of keep it standing against my wall and so far so good thank god it hasn't broken or anything so i will look up some of these items and list them here for you guys to see um but yeah venice was just it's magical it's a city on water you can take boats and gondolas kind of everywhere along the canals do they call them canals i don't know if they call them canals but you know because they're because since the city is, is on water you can walk a lot of places there are streets but there's also a lot of i think canals we're gonna call them canals <laughs> canals and waterways that you can take to get to the different locations in venice i just thought that was super unique um venice was definitely one of the cities that really stood out to me it was just so beautiful and it's so sad because um i think the saint marco square or whatever you call it it floods um and it's actually been flooding pretty frequently and a lot these past couple years and it's so sad to see that a lot of these places that you've read about in history that you've seen when you were younger if you went to these places are actually disappearing because oh i don't know i mean some of these items have been vandalized by people some of it is just because you know natural disasters and things that have happened in the world global warming um has eaten at a lot of these places and this square that you know usually it does flood okay so it's not one of those things where it never flooded and it wasn't a thing it does flood um but it does it didn't flood as frequently as it does now and they're saying that they might lose it in a couple years and it's just so sad because it's such a remarkable place and and that just also reminds me i really want to go to egypt and i want to see like the pyramids and the sphinx and all that and there's certain items like that in egypt have that have started deteriorating and it's just oh it sucks because there's so many things that i want to see and that i learned about but just with natural disasters and everything that have been happening recently it's just take it's gotten rid of a lot of you know a lot of gorgeous architecturally and historical places and it's really sad because you know hopefully one day i want to keep traveling more and seeing these places and you know one day these places won't be here and you know so far i have items with these places on them but in the future if these places flood or whatever the case is or collapse they're not going to be landmarks anymore they're not going to be historical places because they're going to be gone um so yeah so it's just really sad that a lot of history is kind of washing away with the natural disasters and everything happening in the world um sorry didn't mean to go off on that tangent but that's that item uh and oh here we go and another item that i got while i was overseas in 
Also in Italy. Italy, yes, because this is Rome. Rome, okay. <laughs> so I got this in Rome. This is a little replica of the Colosseum. Again, like I told you, I was super touristy when I was younger, so not very much unique items when I went to Europe for the first time. Very generic items. Um, but this is the replica of the Colosseum that they have. Absolutely gorgeous, absolutely breathtaking. Let me tell you guys, seeing these items in pictures and in movies is one thing, but actually going and seeing these beautiful historical places in real life, oh my God, like there's no words. There's no words. That feeling and kind of like that reaction that they show in movies of people just being kind of like star, you know, almost like starstruck and just like in awe. That's what happens when you go to these places. These places. So yeah, guys, just get out there if you can. Travel the world, see the world, you know, people don't hype it up it's true it's really amazing to go to different places and experience different things and cultures and just to see how other people live um it definitely also will give you an appreciation of how you live depending where you go um so yeah get out there see the world um if i go to more places i definitely will share more souvenirs with you if you guys are interested and want to see more videos like this um but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching